supposed to go for a run today, supposed to go for a long run. I had a training run planned in, in my training diary. However, like many things, uh, it got changed because of the rain. I'm back with a new Zwift video. As you know, I use Zwift cycling to complement my running. I'm currently training for a new ultra in September. Today, I had planned to go on a long run. However, it's been raining nonstop all morning. So I've decided to move my run to tomorrow. And instead, I'm going to race on Zwift. Okay, zoom out a bit. So I haven't done a warm up and the race starts in two minutes. Today's race is a simple one. It's a fast crit race. Three laps around Twilight Harbour. So we are going to be doing the Zwift Crit Club Twilight Harbour race, which is three laps, which is just over 20 kilometres. So before we start, I need to make the obligatory rushed introduction as I am again late to the warm-up. Oh, hang on, I've forgotten something. Oh, okay, I'm back. I've forgotten the towel. One day, I will have a proper warm-up, as I know how much of a difference this makes. Um, I also forgot my towel, as always. However, on a positive note, those of you who have watched my previous Zwift videos and maybe had a scroll through the comments will remember that in a moment of excitable madness, I unlocked the shiny new TT bike and immediately switched to it. I'm fully aware that I am riding a TT bike. I know this because on the back of my last video where I talked about drafting and pacing and sticking with groups, etc., etc., I got inundated with comments about the fact that the bike I was riding doesn't have any draft benefit because it's a TT bike. I then rode this new TT bike for many races, not realizing it gives me zero draft benefit. I've now remedied this mistake and I'm back to riding the bog standard entry level Zwift carbon bike. So to the race, 16 Cat D riders in this race. So golden rule, my number one rule for Zwift, at least start at the front or with the front pack don't get dropped on the line. So three, two, one. Let's go. The race starts off really well, and I stick to my number one Zift rule of pushing to the front of the lead pack off the start line. Do not get dropped on the start line. There's no excuse for that. In fact, I actually manage to stick with them for longer than normal. A start like this normally only puts me at the back of the lead pack, but today it was enough to get me to the front. A pack of seven or so riders quickly formed at the front and I was very content to sit in at the back and trail along behind them for as long as I could hang on. The good thing about this course is that it's fairly flat. So there's been a couple of new things that I've learnt. Two specific training points which I'm going to try and see if I can remember to do. It's alright when you're feeling okay but it's hard to do when you're tired. Recently, I learned a couple of new tactics to racing on Zwift. The first one is to try to increase my RPM, especially on tougher uphill sections. So the two things that I've learned through trial and error, the first one is my RPM. So how many times I spin my legs versus the power I'm putting down, I think that is. The second is to pull my feet up and over on the pedals over the top of the rotation. RPM was the first thing, and then the second thing was up and over on my feet. It's hard to explain again. Um, what I mean by that is, I've just been naturally putting the power as I go down into the pedal with my leg and my, my feet. But I've also now realized, if I drag my feet up, and this again links into the RPM, it helps with the amount of power that I'm putting into the pedals. You see, I put all of the power into the downward motion of my pedaling and forget to pull my feet up and over the top. This combined with increased RPM has helped me increase my overall speed and watts per kg. The trick is now to remember to do it when I'm tired and learn when to drop and increase the gears during the race. So I'm pretty sure that clips or shoes that allow me to clip into pedals will make a difference. I'm currently using toe cages and I'm getting dropped. Then, as I'm chatting to camera, I let the front pack slip away. I had to then put down in excess of 400 watts to try and close the gap. I'm getting dropped, I can't get dropped. 
There was a point here where I was only a second behind the back of the pack. And I'm annoyed that I didn't go for it here. Oh man, I can't catch him. Annoyingly, a brief lack of concentration and the pack managed to drop me. I'm really annoyed now because I took my eye off the ball and I got dropped. I could really do with the guy behind me catching me. So we can catch him together. Oh man. That's really annoying. Okay, the guy behind me is catching me up now. Which is to be expected, I'm on my own. The guy behind me, named Tupi Dasso, catches me at this point. Let's make sure I'm matching his pace. Previously, I have been guilty of allowing riders to approach me from behind to blast past me. This is actually a really good tip for newbie riders like me who find themselves in no man's land. And that's to ensure that you match the pace of the oncoming rider if you want to benefit from their draft. Now, I don't normally name Zwifters, but I enjoy trying to keep up with this chap. Spoiler alert, we stick together for the majority of the race. As he goes past me, I increase my output to match his and I eventually close the gap. Okay, I'm going to stick with this guy, hopefully. We then duke it out for the next 10 or so kilometres. I really haven't got the knack of sitting on someone's wheel. I either get dropped or I ride past them. I haven't quite mastered the surfing the wheels tactic that I've seen other riders do really well. I like to get other riders to try and do all the work whilst I conserve some energy for harder sections like the hills, but I haven't quite mastered that tactic yet either. Oh, 5% heel. Here we go. This is where I get dropped. Luckily for me, the hills are short and easy to overcome. My weight isn't so much of a handicap on flatter routes. I've been trying to drop my gears. You see, normally I get easily dropped on the hills. However, these short rollers can be beaten by heavier riders like me as long as I power into them. I've been trying to drop my gears to match the terrain now, which is what I never did before. I just pretty much kept it in 10. The good thing is, because I'm heavy, I'm really heavy, on the downhill sections, I have a fighting chance. Okay, I'm getting dropped again. And then at 9.10, Poxy Hill, I picked up the pace, and because I learned from the previous mistake, I really didn't fancy spending the rest of the race floundering around on my own. So I put down over 400 watts again, and this was just enough to allow me to get back onto his wheel. Oh no! And then just as I was closing the gap, I noticed the gate that gives me a new power-up coming up. Use it! And because I hadn't opened the companion app, I had to fumble around trying to activate yes. the power up. Oh, I didn't have my companion app on. Well, I've just got this thing where if I've got an unused one, I use it before I get a new one. On hindsight, I should have used the draft boost power up earlier when he started to drop me. I spent too much energy catching him back up. It was avoidable. I haven't quite mastered the power up tactics yet. And then as we get to the end of the first lap, I used the burrito. I used it here for two reasons. Firstly, because I was curious to see what it did again, as I'd forgotten. Oh, it's undraftable. He can't draft off me. And because I thought I'd got a new power-up as I crossed the line, which I then realised I didn't because it wasn't a power-up line. It was just a lap line. As we start the second lap, I remembered that I had a fan set up and I can't believe how unorganised I am sometimes because I forgot to turn the fan on. So I turned it on and immediately felt refreshed as I was dripping in sweat. I forgot about the fan. Oh, fan's on. Woo. I then spend the next lap working hard with him. We swap back and forth, taking the lead. I really enjoyed our little one-on-one -on -one ride along. So I dropped him a thumbs up and I got one back. Got a ride on. I then used my drafting boost power up in an effective way, which was uncharacteristic of me. Drafting boost. Oh, 
Okay, I've managed to sit with him, which I'm quite happy with. I've dropped a gear. So I stay on his back wheel. Getting dropped though, that's the problem. I can't get that balance. We then hit that short 5% roller and a small gap formed. I again was disappointed I allowed this to happen. Oh man, have I got dropped? I think I've got dropped. Flipping heck. You see, I too often allow negative thoughts about being dropped happen when what I need to do is forget about that and keep pushing regardless. Come on, fight to get back. I refuse to allow that to happen now. Come on, Ryan. And we're back. I worried then. Thought I was gonna get stuck on my own. I'm exhausted at this point and I could have happily sat back and resigned myself to the fact that being dropped is inevitable. Come on, legs up and over. Come on, up and over. But that is not the attitude I wanna have on Zwift. Up and over. And then a combination of me not giving up and him not taking advantage of the situation. Up and over. I managed to close the gap again and catch him back up. And we're back. Back properly. He then dropped me a really nice message. Apparently he follows me on YouTube, which uh, I really appreciate. Um, and he gave me a big smile as I was cycling. I think the guy just said in the chat that he follows me on YouTube. Well, Tupidasso, big shout out. I've really enjoyed this ride with you. And then just like the running community, Zwift seems to be a really great community. And this is the only reason I shared his name in this video. Thank you, sir, for the mini battle and thank you for the thumbs up. You helped me turn a mediocre race into a fun one. Oh, he's put the burrito on. Clever. He then effectively uses the burrito against me, which was a clever move. And because he used the burrito, I thought I'd test his metal. Clever. He's tied me out. Now to return the favour with the burrito. I wanted to see if I could put a short burst in to see if I can create a gap and force him into a burst to tie him out as well. These are things that other cyclists have done to me. I've never done this before, but I'm up for trying new things in Zwift. So I drop the burrito and let it run its course. Then I go for it. I increase the gears up to 18. I get up and out of the saddle and fight through the burning legs to try and put him under as much pressure as I can muster. I don't expect to break away, but I do hope to tire him out slightly. Let's see if we can't make him pedal. I briefly got above 450 watts. My legs were burning at this point. I'd spent too long trying to close gaps previously. And I opened a very small gap and I could see that his, his watts per kg increased to plus three. I knew he was never gonna let me drop him and I wanted to try and be on the front foot for a change rather than always playing catch up. And if nothing else, I had fun doing it. Right, just over 5K left to go. Then again, thanks to a lapse in concentration, I allowed a gap to form and it was just one too many bursts to catch him. I did everything I could to try and catch him, but it was obvious he was going for it, dropping in excess of four watts per kg. He's going for it. Four, four watts a kilogram, he's going for it. Fair play. Fair play. I haven't got that. He's gone. I had no more in the tank. I wanted my finish line battle, but enjoyed the opportunity to practice my drafting tactics. And with only four kilometers left of the race, I push a steady pace and cross the finish line in seventh place. Good news, I finished in the top half. Seventh out of 16. I'm really pleased with that. Progression, progression in the right direction. I'm getting closer to those podiums. 
Oh. I really, really enjoyed this race, which is why I've made a video about it. I learned a lot. Finishing the top half was a big step in the right direction and one step closer to the podium spots. I'm now going to make finishing in the top half my second priority behind getting off the start line uh, for all my Zwift videos. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing as it motivates me. And in return, I promise to entertain and motivate you too. Please leave me a comment with your Swift advice and ideas. I'd really love to get to a thousand subscribers. A lot of my learning curves have come from viewer comments and I read every single one. Thanks for watching. Someone left a comment on one of my videos that said, if you're still able to talk when you finished, you never gave it your all. I agree. Uh, I agree.